Okay, it is time to switch out the perfume cabinet once again. We are well and truly in autumn here and this is long overdue. I have gradually been sort of bringing up different fragrances from downstairs and sort of shoving them in the perfume cabinet. So it's time to tidy it up and make a choice on what I want to focus on for the next couple of months. I'm just gonna whip through these fragrances because these videos do get very, very long and I do tend to waffle on about them. And a lot of these fragrances I've spoken about again and again, so I don't think I need to go in detail now. And there are a couple of new ones in here that I may not have spoken about that much and I will do separate reviews on those or by any means if there's anything that you see in here that you want me to talk about more in depth please do leave a comment below anyway let's get on with showing you the perfume that's coming into my cabinet for the season of autumn first up is a new fragrance in my collection this is precious forest by keiko macheri i have talked about this fragrance quite a bit i've had many many samples of it over the past year and I finally bit the bullet and bought the bottle. Um, I'm not sure when this video is going to go up, hopefully soon, so you may not have seen me talk about this bottle previously, but here we are, that's coming in. Next up is Ombre Nobile, or Ombre Nobile. This is by Nobile 1942, I believe it's an Italian house. I haven't actually, I've had this perfume for a couple of years now and I've barely worn it. Uh, I do have a lot of amber fragrances in my collection, so it's just one of those ones that I never seem to reach for. And as I was going through the drawer today, I looked at it and thought, this is the time to really give this fragrance a good go and to see if it's worthwhile keeping it in my collection. Another amber, this is Ormond Jane's Tolu. I adore this fragrance. It's a very balsamic, resinous amber that's also quite powdery. Oh, it's so comforting. It's so lovely. I clearly haven't worn it enough and uh, this year I'm going to give it a bit more of a wear. Although I will note that I have been through a full travel size of this as well. So that's why the bottle is still relatively full. Another one that I have been talking about quite a lot lately and you can see that dent just keeps getting bigger. This is Victoria by Frasai. Uh, not so much of an ambery fragrance. This is more of a floral woody with a very prominent lychee note in the top. It's very tart. Um, it's got a lot of body to it, which I like from those woods, but at the same time, it's still quite easy wearing because of those florals and the fruit. I absolutely adore this fragrance, as you are well aware. Money well spent on this bottle. Going into the more gourmand realm this is ombre nagil by hermes and again i've spoken about this one quite a lot this bottle was new to me last year for my birthday i believe i think matt bought it for my birthday and uh, i haven't really worn it to be honest so i'm looking forward to digging back into that one this year particularly as i try to make more of an attempt to get back into my yoga because i like to wear it after yoga class next up we have 100 Silent Ways by Nishane. This is a really beautiful white floral fragrance. Uh, it's also very sweet. I consider this to be a fairly gourmand white floral uh, and it's very powerful, very strong. So I usually wear this in the cooler months only. Uh, however, I did bring this up a few weeks ago while it was still warm here and I did try and wear it in the heat and it did okay as long as I didn't spritz too much. Literally one spray on my abdomen under my clothes was enough. And I did actually get a compliment on it that day, but it was from my soon to be stepdaughter. So I don't really count that because she already knows I'm a fragrance fanatic. However, she just really loved this one. So I'm making note of that for future reference. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen this recently. Uh, I did a post on this one. Uh, this is uh, also a new one in my collection. This is Je ne sais quoi by Thea Cabanel. I, Absolutely adore this one. This is probably one of my favorite gourmand fragrances ever. It doesn't smell like cake and it is just so comforting and so enveloping and I absolutely adore it. Mask Noir by Narciso Rodriguez. This is a recent purchase as well. I had a gift card from work and I honestly was struggling to figure out what I wanted to get with it. And then it occurred to me that 
I should try this one because it's touted as being one of the less sweet fragrances from the Narciso Rodriguez line and I do like Narciso Rodriguez. Some people think they're overhyped, possibly. I just really enjoy them and I actually really, really enjoy this fragrance. So this one, if I, hadn't, if I didn't have the Rouge, I would have bought this one a lot sooner and I'm really glad I've added it to my collection. An oldie but a goodie, this is Fève Delicious by Maison Christian Dior. Look, I, I'm kind of on the fence as to whether or not I'm going to keep this one in my collection, to be honest. I, I feel like it might be a bit superfluous to requirements, <laughs> like most bottles in my collection. I really had a moment with it a couple of years ago. I'm just not sure that I want to keep it, but I'm not in a hurry to declutter anything. But I'm just setting things aside for potentially moving them on in future. Um, but I, I'm not in a rush to declutter anything this year. So don't be surprised if I say I'm decluttering it and then you still see it again in a year's time. Ylang Ylang Nosy Bee. Just a beautiful tropical, well, it's not really tropical, but it's, thanks Poppy. It's almost tropical, but to me, this is primarily a vanilla scent, um, but it just has a little bit of that tropical banana -y vibe of Ylang Ylang and it's absolutely stunning. Again, another really comforting fragrance. Another fresh eye making it into the rotation. This is Blondine, a favorite of our beloved Eve from Eve Spiders Smells. She's obviously the one who introduced me to this fragrance. She sent me a sample of it back in 2020 and I really enjoyed it at the time. I wouldn't say that I necessarily considered it a love at the time, um, but it kind of just got into my psyche. And when I was making a purchase of Victoria, and because I was purchasing from direct from the perfumer overseas and I was paying the shipping, I decided that I was going to get another bottle at the same time. And this is the one that I chose. Although there were several that I really had my eye on because they do make beautiful fragrances. And I actually enjoy a lot from their line. Taizen Du and Tian Di are, are two more that I really, really enjoy. Uh, but this is the one that won out and I'm really glad that I purchased it. La Labella by Mimo Paris. It's classified as being a Chypre floral. This is a really lovely coconutty, weird sort of jasmine-y, ambery kind of fragrance. It's just, it's very unique, very different. It took me a long time to get on board with this fragrance. I just could not figure out, and I still struggle sometimes to figure out where and when I want to wear this one, uh, but I absolutely adore the scent itself. It's very, very interesting, totally unique, and definitely worthwhile checking out if you want something a little bit different. New Look 1947, how could I not bring this one out for autumn? I absolutely adore this fragrance. I really like to just bathe in it when I wear it. And uh, I do have a massive big bottle of it as well that I bought in a panic back in 2021 before I had learnt to restrain myself. And uh, so I'm just working my way through the 40 mil and then I will transfer to the big bottle. I'm actually sort of half thinking maybe I should retain the 40 mil and just move on to the bigger bottle because this might be really good for travel. But this is the one that I grabbed to bring up. So that's what I'm showing you. Haven't seen one of these in a while. This is Queer Beluga by Guerlain from the Arts and Materials line. Uh, I have put a little bit of a dent in this actually. I'm surprised that I have worn as much as I have. I think I do tend to go through this one because it does tend to die down to a fairly quiet scent on me pretty quickly. Uh, but again, I, I just really love this suede vanillic feel to it and um, I'm really glad that I managed to get the older bottle as well. I managed, this was the last one in my city when I picked this one up, so I was very happy to grab it. This is Velvet Rose and Oud by Jo Malone. If you managed to skip back to my 2020 videos, I did work my way through a little 12 mil travel size of this and uh, I decided to upgrade. This was a secondhand bottle that I purchased in one of the Facebook groups. And it is actually one of my favorite rose fragrances and most certainly my favorite rose oud fragrance because it's not 
too syrupy. I really enjoy it. This one absolutely had to make an appearance for autumn because this is the ultimate autumn fragrance, if you ask me. Uh, Lost Wanderer by Pia Sim Parfums. I've talked about this quite a bit as well. I think this was gifted to me by the brand back in 2021. I have used quite a bit of it. And it's just a really lovely, fluffy, resinous, spicy tobacco vanilla scent. It does remind me a little bit of the Tom Ford Tobacco Vanille, but I actually prefer this one. I think it wears a lot lighter, it's a bit spicier and a bit fluffier and not nearly as syrupy. I just can't handle the syrupy element of the Tom Ford. So this is beautiful. Really, really love this. Poem by Longcom. This might surprise some people. Why am I bringing this out in autumn? Well, because sometimes I like to have things that remind me of other seasons, but I actually think this works so well in the cooler weather because it does have a little bit of that 90s vintage vibe going on and it is it is does have quite an ambery base so it's not too heavy because it's got lots of those florals that really lift it up uh, but uh, and the peach note as well i think there's peach in here it's just a stunning fragrance and I heard a rumor recently that this has been discontinued or about to be discontinued. I hope that's not true because so many people love this one um, but it's forefront in my mind for that reason and I decided that I'm going to grab it out for autumn. Ooh La La by Theo Cabanel. I've talked about this quite a bit before too. I really love this. This is a really um, nutty sandalwood fragrance. It's again a very comforting scent. I really, really love it. And it again is a perfect one for autumn. It's very cozy. It's a very cozy scent. So Teo Cabanel. Uh, Ooh La La by Teo Cabanel. Violet Blonde by Tom Ford. You can't really read the plaque on the bottle. This is a really vintagey, musky violet scent. Um, the thing I like about this is it is kind of reminiscent of the Balenciaga Paris Eau de Parfum but the musk is a bit heavier in this and the musk feels or has that more of a natural scent to it. So it is a little bit more on the animalic vintage vibe side of things. And I absolutely adore it. When I start wearing this, I'd like to wear it a lot. <laughs> so that is Violet Blonde by Tom Ford. Here is another one that I thought was discontinued, but it appears that I might have been misled on that front. Uh, this is Bottega Veneta, Bottega Veneta Eau de Parfum. I used to have the 75 mil of this as well. They came in like a gift set where you got a full size and the little 30 mil size. Uh, I ultimately sold the 75 mil bottle but kept the 30 mil because I really adore this fragrance, but I find that I just don't reach for it as much as I used to. So this, the little 30 mil is more than enough. Another favorite of mine that I've talked about many, many times. This is Samsara. This is the Eau de Parfum. I have talked a lot about and shown you a lot of wear of the Eau de Toilette over the last couple of years. But coming into the cooler months, I feel like this one will be the more appropriate choice. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite scents. So this is Blackwater Thistle by Criminal Elements, a slightly green floral fragrance with a really lovely, interesting soil note, a damp soil note in it. And some people really love this. Some people really hate it because of that soil note. It does literally smell like soil, uh, but I just find it really comforting. I feel it makes me feel like I'm sitting in a garden at dusk or something when the soil is getting a little bit damp and I'm meditating or something. I don't know, but I just really love it. Along a similar vein, we have Chanel number no. 19 Poudre or Poudre. I don't know how you say it. Again, another green leaning floral. I did recently retrieve my Chanel number no. 19 Parfum and I wore it a couple of times about two weeks ago and I really, really love it. Uh, but I, that's a vintage bottle. I think it's from the 90s. So I, I use that one sparingly. It reminded me that I haven't worn number 19 for a while. It was a toss up as to whether or not I was going to pull out number 19 Eau de Parfum or the Poudre, but I pulled out the Poudre. 
Iris Prima by Penhaligans. This is one that I actually retrieved a couple of weeks ago as well and I have been wearing it a lot at night time. In fact, I would say that most of this dent has been made in the last few weeks because I've just been having a moment with it. And I've just, you know, I'm really trying to be conscious about what's in my wardrobe and making sure that I'm using things. So um, I've really been enjoying this one. I just wanna keep it in for a few more weeks. It's not my goal necessarily to use them up as quickly as possible, but I just want to really familiarize myself with things that were sitting in my wardrobe kind of unused or barely touched for a really long time. Rev gosh. I don't know how you say it. <laughs> Somebody please help. Um, this is one that I've had in my collection for a long time and it was one of those ones that I, I just didn't I just didn't get for the longest time. And all of a sudden, a few months ago, I had a sniff of it and went, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And ever since then, I've been absolutely obsessed with it and I've worn it a few times. Uh, I don't have any idea how much is left in there. It's pretty full still, but um, I know some people really love the packaging of this. I really hate it. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I think that's part of the reason why I, I didn't for the longest time want to wear it because I just wasn't attracted to the bottle at all. It's growing on me. It's growing on me because the scent has really ingrained itself in my brain now. I just absolutely adore it. And so consequently, the packaging doesn't seem so bad to me anymore. Origin Story by Sarah Horowitz. I've talked about this quite a bit in the past as well. Uh, just a really beautiful amber fragrance. I love the story behind it as well. It's got a lot to do, it has a lot to do with Sarah's foray into becoming a perfumer and uh, I really do love her work actually and I have been considering getting another sample set from her so that I can maybe explore a potential fragrance in her line for possibly my wedding. Louis by Guerlain, another discontinued amazing fragrance and why do they do that? I just love this presentation as well. If they're planning to re-release it in a different bottle then shame on them because I absolutely adore this one. Although maybe they just feel like it's a little bit out of date, I don't know. I'd be surprised if they're never bringing this one back, you know. It's just, it's actually very well loved and I know it had a moment in Fragcom you know, a year or two ago because I think it was being discontinued and everyone was suddenly hyping it up or, or frantically trying to find it. It's just a really lovely, spicy, woody vanilla scent with some leathery tones. I, I actually really love it. Tardes by Cana Barcelona, another one that I think is perfect for autumn. A lot of people talk about wearing this in the warmer months. I just can't do it. The opening is just far too much for me and it has that sort of plasticky note in the opening and it's just, yeah, it's just, it's too much in for me in the heat. But in the transition seasons, this one really sings. Another Tom Ford fragrance, this time Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme. I think this one's been discontinued as well. Uh, it's a really sort of lovely vanillic spicy scent that has a, I think, predominant coffee note. So a bit of maybe a bit of pistachio. It's very dessert-like. I like it. Uh, do I love it? I'm not sure. I've barely worn it since I bought the bottle. I, I did enjoy the sample of it that I had back in 2020. <laughs> I think 2020 had a lot to, has a lot to answer for. So uh, this is really an experiment. This is the first time I've had a dedicated attempt to wear it. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Mugler Murat de Majestas. Love this fragrance. Uh, I don't know why I don't wear it more. Every time I put it on, I go, wow, I need to wear this more. Every time, every time. Uh, I'm not a huge Mugler fragrance lover but this one, beautiful. And I actually really enjoy it for work. Tender Romance by Ralph Lauren. <laughs> this is, you know, my, one of my guilty pleasure fragrances. It's just so not 
typically my style, but I'd say now it's probably more my style than it ever has been because I have been getting into more gourmand leaning fragrances. And to me, this is a gourmand leaning floral. Uh, it has a, like a caramelly vanilla bent to it and it's really, really pretty and Matt really loves this as well. I'm gonna put two down here now. This is Shalimar Eau de Parfum and Shalimar Millicene Tonka. I really wanted to bring the Shalimar Millicene Tonka out again, but um, I also wanted to have the Shalimar available to me as well, because let's face it, the Millicene Tonka is, is a lot sweeter uh, and vanillic compared to the OG. And I just love, I love her. All right, we're getting to the end. This is Mistyor Le Parfum. I do have the Mistyor Eau de Parfum 2017 sitting on my bedside table because I tend to wear that at night time. And again, it's one of Matt's favorites. However, this is the one that made me sit up and pay attention to the Mistyor line. I did not wear all of this, by the way. I bought this as a secondhand bottle. Uh, this is a much more vintage smelling, ambery version of Mistyor. And it's, it does smell a little bit more grown up and I really, really enjoy it. And I basically, because there's hardly any juice left in this bottle, I'm a bit concerned that it's going to oxidize and perish a lot more quickly than most of my other fragrances. So I've just sort of decided that I wanna try and use this one up because it's discontinued, you can't get it anymore, and I just want to enjoy it while I can. Kintsugi by Mask Milano. I've talked about this many, many times. I really enjoy this fragrance, and I think this works really well pretty much all year round, but I do particularly like it in the transition seasons, so um, this was a no-brainer for me. You had to have known that this was coming. My beloved Bengal Rouge. Okay, maybe you might have expected this to come out more in winter than autumn, uh, but I do, I just can't wait. I really, I can't wait to start wearing this one again. And, and today was the first day that we've had that was definitely cooler and that I needed to wear long sleeves. So at least for a little bit. So I'm very excited to pull this one out. And then finally is another one that you will not have seen me speak about before. Although I'm sure you've probably seen it talked about many times by now because I think, well, I mean, I think these were sent to me last year and it's taken me this long to sort of work through the massive package that Orientica sent me, and which I'm very grateful for. But as I mentioned in a recent video, I. I I really struggle when I just get sent a whole bunch of full bottle stuff and A, it's overwhelming, but B, you know, when you only like a couple out of 10 that they send you, it, it becomes a bit of a burden as to what to do with them. So this is Exotic from the Art Bellissimo line. And this is probably one that I wasn't expecting to like because it's sort of a vanillic woody, sandalwoody scent with a, you know, just a hint of spice in there. But, but actually this ended up being one of my favorite scents that they sent me. <laughs> and I like it particularly because I don't think it is a replication or an inspiration of anything else that's on the market already, unlike a lot of their other fragrances. So anyway, I, have actually been really enjoying this one but my stepdaughter also really likes it so I'm possibly going to end up giving it to her because as someone who who enjoys vanilla but doesn't necessarily need any more vanilla sandal woody scents in her arsenal uh, perhaps it's better to be passed on and let somebody else enjoy it more fully than I do but I certainly want to have a little play with this one at bedtime over the next couple of months because it is a very cozy fragrance. Mon Guerlain Eau de Parfum. As you can see, I've, I've made a bit of a dent in it, but not a huge dent. And I did wear this to bed the other night and yeah, I don't know, I'm kind of a little bit ambivalent towards it at the moment. So I think I need to find the right circumstance to wear it. I might try wearing it to work. I don't think I've ever worn this fragrance to work. I think I've always worn it at home because it is a bit on the sweeter side compared to the types of fragrances I used to wear at the time that I bought this fragrance. Um, so I think maybe I just need to change it up a little bit uh, or maybe it just simply isn't for me. I don't know, but I do enjoy it, but I don't 
really know if I can say for sure that I absolutely love it. I know a lot of people do. You know, the hardest thing about these fragrance rotation videos is the, is the emptying out of the cabinet after I've decided what I want to add uh, or what I want to bring into the rotation. I mean, look at this. This is a typical, this is a perfect example. It's like quintessential autumn fragrance, Lair du Desert Marocaine, and yet <laughs> I, I'm taking it out because I don't want to have too much in the cabinet. And as you can see, I've already had quite a lot that I just took you through that I'm bringing in. So I will do a video where I talk about the fragrances that I wore the most in that last rotation. So that's it. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know what you're planning to wear this transition season and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.